Yo guys, what's going on? My name is Tim Kelly. This is the NFL Final Score on the Real Sports Talk Network, the Season 4 premiere of this show. And basically, if you've never checked this out at YouTube.com slash MrKellStar before, what we do on the show occasionally... Myself and other guests, sometimes just myself, we will recap every single game in the NFL week, give you a quick recap, score, quick, uh, some important stats that came out of the game, any key injuries, anything like that. So without me talking this away anymore, let's get right into it. The Patriots beat the Bills 23-21. Tom Brady and Danny Amendola lead a late drive to set up a Steven Gostowski field goal to win the game. Danny Amendola had 10 catches for 104 yards. And anyone who thought that the Patriots offense was going to come out and just be in sync, even though they lost Aaron Hernandez, Gronk didn't play, they lost Wes Welker. They were wrong. I mean, the, the Bills gave the Patriots a tough test today. I think in the end, the Bills are still a below-average team, and the Patriots are still one of the better teams in the AFC. But it's going to be a little different for the Patriots this year. They're going to have to take a little more time to gel and really get things to click. The Bears get a 24-21 win over the Bengals to begin the Mark Trestman era, despite a 162 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns from A.J. Green, who is quickly becoming the best wide receiver in the NFL. The Bears do get that win. Charles Peanut Tillman has two interceptions. He picks up right where he left off last season. And Jay Cutler was alright. He wasn't great. He wasn't terrible. 242 yards, two touchdowns. He did have a pick, though. So, Mark Trestman was kind of brought in with the intention that he was going to really get this offense going, get the most out of Jay Cutler. He didn't do that today with Cutler. Matt Forte only ran for like 50 yards. So, uh, week one, they do get the win, but it wasn't necessarily the way that they drew it up. So, that's something to keep an eye on. The Dolphins get a 23-10 win over the Browns in a battle of second-year quarterbacks. Ryan Tannehill gets the best of Brandon Whedon, who, threw, who throws three interceptions in his first game under the North Turner system. Ryan Tannehill and Brian Hartline have a pretty solid game. I think the key stat that you would take out of this game, though, is that Mike Wallace, one of the big offseason pickups for the Dolphins, only had one catch for 15 yards. Now, a 15-yard catch that stretches the field, and that is partially what you brought him in for, but they paid him a ridiculous amount of money, and they didn't just bring him in to stretch the field. They brought him in and paid him, overpaid him, to be an elite receiver, and he did not perform that way today, so he needs to step up come week two and the rest of this NFL season. The Lions get a 34-24 win over the Vikings. Matt Stafford throws for 357 yards and two touchdowns as the Lions overcame an early Adrian Peterson touchdown. And it felt early on like Adrian Peterson was just picking up where he left off. He began this game first carry of the season with a 78-yard run for a touchdown. Two tremendous cuts that show you physically he has progressed even more than he was last year when he won the NFL MVP coming off a torn ACL. But Adrian Peterson had that one rush for 78 yards in the rest of the game. He had 17 carries for 15 yards. And when he's ineffective, this team is not going to necessarily be very effective because Christian Ponder just really is not a very good quarterback. I think that's the best way to look at it. The Colts get a 21-17 win over the Raiders. Terrell Pryor got the start over Matt Flynn. Throws for over 200 yards, rushes for over 100. But a late Andrew Luck touchdown coupled with two picks from Terrell Pryor allowed the Colts to escape with a win. And... I mean, a lot of people are saying the Raiders finally have a quarterback to build around, and I just I don't look at it that way because I don't think that Terrell Pryor is a good enough passer in this league. I never was that high on him in college. He came in as the number one recruit to Ohio State and never really lived up to that, although he never got to play his senior year. But he never lived up to that, and... I think he can run. I think he can make this team a better team probably than if Matt Flynn had played because Matt Flynn can't run behind this bad offensive line and at least make things interesting. But in the end, do I think that this is a franchise quarterback who's going to win them a Super Bowl? Probably not. LeRon Landry for the Colts today had 15 tackles. Huge game out of the safety today. The Saints get a 23-17 win over the Falcons in the Fox National game. Uh, the Falcons blow a 10-0 lead to the Saints who hold off Matt Ryan 
playing in the Falcons inside their own 10 yard line. Two plays in a row. Steven Jackson had a chance on the one yard line to at least get the ball closer. He drops it because he heard footsteps. And then Tony Gonzalez. Uh, Matt Ryan was pressured, really didn't have much of a chance on fourth and goal, threw it up and found Tony Gonzalez who dropped the ball as well. So I, I don't think that Matt Ryan played his best game, but I have a tough time laying a ton of the blame on him in this game. The key stats to look at from that one, Garrett Hartley knocks home three field goals including the game winner, In the Saints defense, which was historically bad last year, only gave up 17 points to one of the best offenses in the NFL. Now, I'm certainly not someone that's high on Rob Ryan as a defensive coordinator. I think Rex Ryan is a tremendous defensive coach, and we'll get to him and the Jets in a second. And I think Rob Ryan is really an overrated coach. I think I, I do like the energy that he shows. I don't like him necessarily because he's a cow. He was with the Cowboys, and I'm an Eagles fan. I like the energy, but I don't think his defense is with the exception of, I think it was 0-2 with the Raiders where he had a really good defense, with the exception of that, he's never really put together a great defensive unit. His brother, Rex Ryan, and the Jets pull off probably the surprise of the day, get an 18-17 to win over the Bucks, who really should have won this game. Uh, the Bucks took a late lead after Vincent Jackson's catch set up a Ryan Lindell field goal. Vincent Jackson had a huge game that appeared to be the game winner, but Geno Smith was making a rush, was running out of bounds, and Levante David, who's one of the most underrated young defensive players in the game, very good talent. He gets an unnecessary roughness penalty that gives the Jets a chance to win the game, and Nick Folk hits a 48-yard field goal, and the Jets beat Darrell Revis in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 18-17. to uh, Geno Smith looked pretty decent in this game. After a slower start, he was 24-38, 256 yards, a touchdown, a pick, and 47 rushing yards. So Geno Smith in week one, I think it, it's safe to say that he performed better than what we saw pretty much any game from Mark Sanchez last year. The Titans get a 16-9 win over the Steelers behind three Rob Baronis field goals. The Titans really propelled themselves past the lackluster Steelers team. And... To me, the biggest surprise isn't that the Steelers lost because I just I, I never thought the Steelers were better than six or seven wins coming into this year. But the biggest surprise to me is that they lost to the Titans, who are another mediocre at best team. Uh, and they lost Marquise Pouncey today, one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL. That is a huge blow. Uh, they, they had really worked on building that offensive line around Big Ben in the last few years. Marquise Pouncey had been a guy who would help solidify at least part of it, and now the offensive line is going to be a mess. As we saw today, Big Ben sacked five times in this game. I have a feeling this might be a long season for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Seattle Seahawks get a 12-7 win over the Panthers. The Seahawks did not hit their stride today, but 320 passing yards and a late touchdown pass to Jermaine Curse is enough for the Seahawks to edge out the Panthers. Doug Baldwin, who is one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL, he had 91 receiving yards today. So the Seahawks, that's a, that's a crucial win because you're going to have times in the season where you don't play your best. There's always a team or two that you shouldn't lose to that you usually end up doing and they almost did that today but when it came uh, down to it they were able to get away and escape with the win I don't think that there's too much to be worried about their defense looked pretty solid again and the Chiefs to round out the one o'clock games round out the one o'clock games get a 28 to 2 win over the Jags their offense looked extremely efficient in the first game of the Andy Reid era as the Chiefs Cruise past the Jags in week one, and they can tie their win total from last year with a win next week. I think the thing to keep in perspective here, and I'm an Eagles fan, before everyone decides to write these national articles saying, oh, Philadelphia should already miss Andy Reid, they were playing the Jaguars. Calm down. And even if, even if the Chiefs do end up being good, it's not like that, that necessarily means that it wasn't time for a change in Philadelphia, and I think that's the one thing that people never looked at. But the Chiefs get a win. Alex Smith looked really solid in his first game. Jamal Charles had a pretty good game. So the Chiefs get a 28-2 to win over Blaine Gabbert in the Jags. We'll see how long Blaine Gabbert lasts there. On to the two 425 games. The St. Louis, Louis Rams hold off the Arizona Cardinals. They get a late win as Greg the Leg Zerline picks up right where he left off last year with four field goals today, including one to tie the game with nine minutes in the fourth quarter and a 48-yard field goal to win the game to give the uh, 
this difficult game because you got the St. Louis Rams and the Cardinals, and I keep wanting to say St. Louis Cardinals, but the Rams do get the win beside, behind a great game today from Jared Cook. They're tied on seven catches, 441 yards, two touchdowns. Carson Palmer and the Cardinals look good, though, today. Carson Palmer threw for 327 yards, two touchdowns, did throw a pick, but overall he looked pretty solid. Andre Roberts looked good. Larry Fitzgerald had eight catches for 80 yards and a touchdown. Malcolm Floyd had a good game. So at the very least, the Cardinals are an improved team from last year. Despite their fast start, they had an extremely slow finish. And I think with Carson Palmer, the passing game should get more consistent. And we'll see what they're ultimately able to get out of Rashard Mendenhall, who had 16 carries. 460 yards today. The game of the day, though, was the Packers and the 49ers, a rematch of last year's playoff game. But in the end, it ended up feeling a lot more like a playoff game from two years ago that featured the New Orleans Saints and the same San Francisco 49ers. It ended up that the 49ers do get a 34-28 win behind Colin Kaepernick's first 300-yard game and also his first 400-yard passing games. He goes 27 of 39 for 412 yards, three touchdowns, zero picks. Frank Gore and Kendall Hunter look solid, but Anquan Bolden, 13 catches for 208 yards. This is a guy who, for salary cap reasons, the Ravens traded for a seventh round pick in, in, in this past offseason. They traded him for a seventh round pick, and he was able to do this today. The, the Packers looked good. And what it's going to come down to is while the Packers did lose by more than a field goal, the four or more than the four points that the difference ended up being, there was a penalty in the first quarter where Clay Matthews, at the very least, it was a late hit on Colin Kaepernick. If you want to say that he was just working hard to get to Colin Kaepernick and he happened to close on him, I think that that's a little bit far-fetched. But if that's what you believe, then go ahead. But on the same day that we saw the Jets win because of a late hit, it felt kind of wrong that Joe Staley... Uh, because he pushed him, the 49ers got another chance at third down. Instead of having to kick a field goal, they scored a 10-yard touchdown, which gave them four extra points rather than the three points that they would have had. So, I... I I do not necessarily think that this is... I, I don't know what to take out of this game because they ended up winning by more than what the difference that that play had on the game. But I do think that do you get a field goal there instead of a touchdown? It changes the game. Maybe late in this game, the Packers could have lined up for a field goal instead of having to try to bomb that uh, Aaron Rodgers pass down field. Uh, Alden Smith got too much pressure for him to do that anyway. But overall, this is a very good game. The 49ers look like the best team in the NFC so far. The Packers uh, the, the Packers offensively looked very good today. Aaron Rodgers, 333 yards, three touchdowns, another day at the office for him. Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb, both over 100 yards receiving. But defensively, this team, uh, it, they're just not even close to the same team. Johnny Jolly looked good, but other than Johnny Jolly and Clay Matthews, they, they got torn apart by Colin Kaepernick. Vernon Davis tore them apart. He had nearly 100 receiving yards. And Quan Bolden torched them the entire day, averaging 16 yards a catch. They need to sure things up in the secondary. And ever since Charles Woodson's decline, they have not had an, an answer in the secondary. So the 49ers escape the Packers. They get a 34-28 win. It will come with controversy. Let me know what you guys think about this game and all the games that we saw in uh, week one of the NFL season even the Thursday night game with Peyton Manning tying the NFL record with seven touchdowns. And let me know what you think tonight. Sunday night football, we get an NFC East matchup between the Cowboys and Giants. I'm leaning towards the Giants because normally in these early season tilts, Tony Romo comes out well against the Giants. That's kind of been what the recipe's been over the last few years. So I like the Cowboys tonight. I like my Eagles tomorrow, I think. Uh, Chip Kelly's offense for at least the first few weeks is going to be an electric thing that there might not be any answer to. It's going to be a high-scoring game, though the Eagles' defense is not good, and I do think RG3 will take advantage of that with uh, Alfred Morris as well. And then I think the Texans should be able to handle the Chargers, but I think offensively the Chargers may make this a closer game than people expected. I've liked what I've seen out of Phillip Rivers this preseason. He's about the only Charger I like that I saw uh, what I saw out of him this preseason, but he did look pretty solid again. So let me know what you guys think. Week one of the NFL is in the book. Please share this. Facebook.com slash the real sports talk at cash underscore TRST section 215.com. I'll see you guys next time.